Yeah, it's a huge kind of 180 turn for Ford. You remember, you know, they were probably one of the first Western auto, Western automakers to actually introduce EVs. You remember the Mach, Mustang Mach-E, the Ford uh, 150 Lightning, um, and you know they're still selling well, but I think it, they're they're actually bleeding quite a bit of money. Uh, in the last 12 months, they've lost five billion uh, on EVs. So um, you know, I think you know they need to revisit and see uh, instead of a market leader in EVs, they probably needs to you know step back and maybe become a follower until the market recovers. And just looking at its stock, Paul and I were talking about this earlier. The ticker symbol is F for Ford. When you see the drawdown that it had from that peak that we mm. did see earlier in July, it dropped as much as actually 33%. Now it's about uh, still a ways from uh, that peak that we did see. But what is it that shareholders really need to hear in the messaging from Ford in order to turn that stock around? Yeah, uh, a couple of things. So, um, you know, I think today the stock is really not reacting to to this news. Um, you know, I think what the investors are looking for is really similar to what GM and Stellantis has done, which is buyback stock. Um, you know, they want to hear that they're, you know, they're going to, you know, spend, use the cash, use some of that cash that they're conserving from cutting back R&D and buy back some stock, return some of that to the shareholder. So, you know, I think that's why the stock hasn't moved that much today uh, in reaction to this news. All right, Steve, this kind of goes to the heart of the matter, I think, for for me and probably a lot of investors in th this auto industry is what really, at the end of the day, is consumer demand for EVs? Is it fair to say it's not as much today as maybe the industry thought two, three years ago? Yeah, I think the estimates out there in the past were probably a little bit frothy. Like we're actually expecting, you know, penetration to be around 25, maybe 30% uh, by 2030. But other estimates out there were like 50, 75% penetration rate by 2030. It's a little bit too aggressive. Um, I think we're just coming back to reality from the hype we have. Uh, but the other thing is there's a lot of competition out there, right? The Chinese are really looking to, you know, compete with the legacy automakers on cost, on technology. And, the, you know, that brings up another question that I think investors have in their mind is, you know, is this the right strategy for Ford to really to step back at this moment? Should they, should they be doubling down, right, investing more and really compete on a, at a global level? So, um, you know, so hopefully that answers your questions. And you've written about, too, when it comes to Ford and the rising inventories, as well as the increasing price competition when it comes to a profitability headwind here. What does we know as far as what the rest of the year could look like when it comes to those earnings calls that executives have talked about? Oh, there's a lot of risk in the second half. Um, I think we're heading back to pre-COVID levels, you know, with uh, the supply chain smoothed out. Uh, you know, every, you know, they're, they're ramping up, they have been ramping up production. And at the same time, interest rates are still high, right? There are talks about cutting interest, interest rates to help out the consumers. But, you know, we haven't seen that yet. And, you know, we, you know, it probably needs more than a few, a couple of cuts before we get to a point where a consumer gets more excited about uh, buying, you know, ex a much more expensive vehicle today than it was three years ago. You know, average price for a vehicle is $50,000 now. It's not 35, it's not 40, it's 50,000. So, you know, monthly cost is a lot higher for consumer. The cost of acquisition, the cost of ownership is much higher today than before.